All right, it's been a while since I've done a SCP Explain, SCP Infographics video. I know a lot of people are I'm like, bro, where's the infographics, bro? It's, it's not even, it's just, you know, I haven't been getting around to it, really. Uh, I've been doing a lot of changes, upgrading the setup, a lot of personal issues. Rah, rah, rah. Also, for the people, again, I'm asking for your opinions. Would you guys rather me in this top corner, or would you guys rather the green screen, like how we usually do it? But with, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and watch some... Uh, Infographics SCP. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen one of their stuff, but we got SCP 1461 House of Worm. So let's check it out. See what it's talking about. The year is 1941, and the world is gripped by the most violent and widespread war in history. Millions march to war as bloody battles are fought across the globe. Horrendous atrocities are carried out on groups of people, and parts of London are bombed to rubble on a weekly basis. Considering it's only been 20 years since the last World War, it must seem to the early residents of the early 20th century that the world is coming apart at the seams. And amongst the chaos, it'd be easy not to notice a secluded manor house in the English countryside disappearing without a trace for 11 days before suddenly returning to our reality. But thankfully, one organization makes it its sole duty to notice the unnoticeable and understand the impossible. The SCP Foundation. I feel like I'm getting Within that anomalous manor house, Foundation agents and researchers were about to find horrors beyond even their darkest imaginations. This is the grim tale of SCP-1461, better known as the House of the Worm. When the manor house reappeared after its 11-day absence, the Foundation zeroed in, sending agents inside to investigate. It was a two-level dwelling complete with 12 bedrooms, four baths, three studies, a main foyer slash ballroom, a library, a kitchen, and a pantry basement. Oh, y'all rich, rich. <coughs> Dang. Man, imagine. What do you even do with all that space, bro? I can barely maintain my own room. Imagine a whole entire... <sighs> the Foundation observed that a number of these rooms had been fitted with rows of bunk beds, similar to a boarding house or barracks. Only later would they understand why. They found that the upper portion of the home exhibited no abnormal qualities whatsoever. But as the agents investigated further, they found an entrance to the truly anomalous portion of the manor, the extensive sublevel system. No previous records of the building kept by the local council indicated that there would be anything below the manor's basement, so either the mysterious previous occupants, who were nowhere to be found, had built this sublevel, or it just appeared here on its own. Regardless of which was the case, agents and researchers knew that whatever had happened down here had everything to do with the manor's mysterious disappearance. They descended into the depths of what seemed like a man-made cave system, constructed primarily from a mix of concrete, iron, and brass. It was a behemoth of 20th century technology, intricate snaking systems of pipes, gears, and pumping pistons. It was like someone had built an entire factory down here. But for what? The agents began to spread out through the labyrinthian bowels of the manor, hoping to find some answers. But all they seemed to discover was more questions. This place hadn't been built with any form of comprehensible logic. It was full of dead ends. Stairways that ascended and descended to nowhere. Doors that would open to reveal just walls behind them, or not open at all. It was like a maze built by a maniac. It didn't help that it looked like the place was recently hit by an earthquake, with some passages caved in and mangled machinery strewn about. It seemed that no human workers had interfered with the impossibly complex and bizarre machinery in quite some time. A number of the materials used to construct said machinery, as well as the gray sandstone filling in the collapsed passageways, remain unidentified to this day. Already, the sublevel was proving to be a complex puzzle box with only an estimated 75% of its layout ultimately being mapped by Foundation researchers. However, they would soon realize that this place wasn't just confusing, it was deadly. The only method of self-maintenance detected by the exploring agents were pipes that would fire a thick black lubricant onto the surrounding machinery. One of the Foundation agents had the misfortune of getting covered in it while exploring a darkened passageway and 80% of his body was melted as a result. It appeared that the viscous black goo was incredibly corrosive. That's not, that's not 106. That's, that's not 106. To all organic matter. A number of the machines also emitted dangerously high quantities of gamma and X-ray radiation, 
making it difficult to explore many of the caverns without heavy hazmat protection. And worst of all, were the extremely hostile creatures living in the caves who would regularly attack Foundation personnel. These abominations came to be known as SCP-1461-1, vicious steampunk Frankenstein monsters, once human, but with large parts of their bodies were That nigga ugly as hell, bro. Frankenstein ain't the word. I don't even want to say nothing to him. That's how ugly it is. I know his breath. Hot as shit. Probably smell like tomato manure. <laughs> Yo. Placed by crude mechanical implants, including metal. Yeah, I'm sure it's kind of short. You like kind of ooh. teeth and claws. 1461-1s have displayed a taste for human flesh, and they have dragged multiple Foundation agents down into their lair to be converted into monsters like them. It's believed that SCP-1461 is capable of controlling these bees through the strategic use of sound from its brass speaking pipes, leading them into areas where Foundation personnel are present to instigate conflict. Many of these pitiful creatures have had their throats replaced by phonographs, endlessly repeating the same nonsense phrases over and over again. I am what you have made me. I am choice, and I am tyranny. Forgive me. I am then and I am now, what gods they will be then. I am evil and I am flesh. I am the trap. I am beauty and I am chaos. Children are selfish. I am the worm. I have broken God. Still, in spite of the mazes, monsters, and deadly chemicals, the agents persisted and managed to discover several important locations. The gel production chamber- Oh, I told that nigga, shut up and slap the shit out of him with the back of my barrel. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm not trying to hear that. Where on sub-level three creates glass jars from the unidentified sandstone and fills them with a slime that looks to contain living eyes and teeth. The factory deliveries room is filled with a huge number of crates and boxes, which seem to shift and change in number between Foundation patrols. The speaking tube room on sublevel 11 contains a grand pulpit that acts as the connecting point for the complex array of speaking tubes running through the entire cave system. The body parts of a deceased female also appear to be wired into the machinery like spare parts. What and on sublevel 12, they found the so-called catalyst room. Here, they discovered a huge, complicated, clockwork that? and steam-powered machine that appeared to be broken and missing some parts. Most horrifying of all, though, is the raised platform in the center of the catalyst room, hey, on top of which is a like metal that? hospital bed. A desiccated male corpse rests upon the bed. That nigga about six, seven out the womb, nigga. Its chest punctured by large syringes connected by tubes to some kind of pumping machine. The parts connecting this pumping machine to the overall apparatus of the room were missing, though, leaving its purpose a mystery. The Foundation assumed that fluids used to be drawn out of this corpse to somehow power Hermogene. the machine. You may be starting to worry that there doesn't seem to be any answers here, that this house is one big mystery. But lucky for you, you're wrong. An old journal was also discovered in the Catalyst Room, and if what was written inside is to be believed, that we may finally have some truth about who created the House of the Worm, why it was created, and what horrible events triggered its mysterious disappearance and reappearance. His true name has been redacted by the Foundation, and special efforts have been made to maintain secrecy around the house, seeing as it's an anomaly of great interest to a cult known as the Church of the Broken God. So we'll just call the one who made this place, the Inventor. Before any of this, the inventor was one of the many Englishmen traumatized and almost killed in the horrific- Was it 106 origin story? He was also a soldier and fell into a pit. Are those connected? Big trench battles of World War I. After a near-death experience, mm -hmm. the inventor, like many geniuses and madmen, was plagued by surreal and nightmarish visions. He saw a huge creature that he referred to as the worm. A gigantic metal monstrosity Fireblast. with dragon-like jaws full of gnashing gears that rampage through Europe, destroying and devouring everything in its path. These apocalyptic visions also presented him with a solution, vague blueprints for a machine that might be the salvation of him and others willing to take his new gospel to heart, an escape from a world that the inventor knew in his heart was about to end. He hired work-starved laborers from across the country to help him make his visions a reality, and began a massive secret construction project beneath his isolated country manor house. For the inventor, it was all a labor of love. He wanted to protect his wife, son, and daughter from the terrible jaws of the worm. 
But as the project stretched on, his wife began to suspect that he'd lost his mind. Many of his workers, however, felt just the opposite. They became infatuated by the inventor's sermons on the nature of the worm and the coming apocalypse they hoped to escape. Soon enough, they had become a bona fide cult, constructing the elaborate sublevels underneath the house in preparation for the fast approaching day of reckoning. Then came World War II. The inventor saw Hitler, hungry for war, as one of the avatars of the worm. Finally, knowing that the time was right, he activated the machine and successfully trapped the worm in the bowels of his mechanized home. However, as the blitz raged and London's bombing began, the inventor felt as though he hadn't stopped anything. He realized once and for all that he was never meant to stop the apocalypse, only escape it. And by throwing the final wow. switch and setting the machine he and his followers had built into overdrive, he did just that. This was the moment that the House of the Worm disappeared, transporting the inventor, his family, and his devoted staff to a different world. An empty gray world, devoid of war, but also lacking all the comforts of regular life, including food. Things went downhill from there, as their supplies quickly began to run out, and the cult descended into cannibalism in order to survive. Shit! Whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on! You telling me you about to travel to another world and you don't you didn't prepare and stock up enough food for years? For sure. We we moving like that. Okay. Things weren't going much better in the inventor's personal life. His wife, fearing what would happen to the family, took her own life and the life of his daughter. Wow. Yet this point, the inventor's mind was so fractured that it's possible he may have killed them himself. Either way, it was only the inventor and his son left and more trouble was brewing. Eudora, one of the staff trapped in the building with the inventor and his cult, started a mutiny. She claimed the worm spoke to her from below, and that their only path to salvation was pleasing the worm. How would they please it? A sacrifice, of course. They would give it the son of the man who had trapped it. The mutineers took the inventor's only remaining child and descended into the lowest wow, sub-levels. The inventor the followed, hoping to track them down save his son and salvage Yo, the house is that big you can't nightmare. find it as he ventured deeper battling the members of eudora's new cult he found that they were changing themselves becoming the half-human cyborg creatures that the foundation would later discover the inventor would find eudora herself in the speaking tube room her body still living was wired into the machinery and she had sacrificed his son to the worm in a rage the inventor murdered eudora or whatever was left of her then heard a familiar voice <laughs> speaking that out of a nearby that. speaking tube. It said, I am what you have made me. I am then, and I am now. I am choice, and I am tyranny. I am evil, and I am flesh. I am beauty, and I am chaos. I am the worm. The voice was his own. In that terrible moment, the inventor realized that the worm wasn't a giant all-devouring monster. It was him. Damn. In trying to protect his loved one from a perceived apocalypse, he'd brought them all to their horrible demise. He'd trapped them with the monster he'd hoped for them all to escape from, because no matter what you build, you can't escape from who you are. Grief-stricken and broken, the inventor descended into the catalyst room. There was his son, stuck with the syringes, drained of all life to fuel the mighty machine his father had created. In his last moments, the inventor decided to do the only noble thing. He threw himself into the machine, destroying both it and himself in the process. The house was transported back to our own reality, but the worm, in a sense, was no more. But who knows if the worm is really dead? Its thoughts and poisonous intent still lingers in the caverns and rattles through the speaking pipes. Whatever really happened, the Foundation is still picking up the pieces today, and who knows what lurks in the parts still hidden from our knowledge. Now go check out SCP-0- I don't- I don't know, bro. That- Like... Uh, Alright, the plots are sorry, bro. Class D, Cozy, you should rate SCPs out of 10. Bro, I'm not no D class. We've already taken a test, and I am 05 Council. Like, come on, don't disrespect me. That was confusing. I mean, I, I, the plot, like, it was just all leading up to that plot twist. That's pretty much it. That's, that's really it.